Good day, lovely ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sake, and I found something nice I haven't seen others talk about while looking up D&D stuff. Basically, as long as I haven't gotten anything wrong, you can get your passive armor class so high in D&D 5e that even a Tarrasque, you know, probably the strongest official creature, basically D&D Godzilla, the only thing that can actually kill a god in lore, a creature that can only be killed by itself, aside from, you know, it can't because there's only ever one. <laughs> you get the idea, he's strong, and you can get your AC so high that even that couldn't hurt you, unless it rolls a 19 or a 20 on a 20-sided die. And all this, just with basic rules. Though, if you use expansions, you could get to a point where he would need to roll a 20, but we'll get to this later. And for those not too familiar with D&D, rolling a 20 on a 20-sided die usually means 100% success chance, even if other modifiers wouldn't add up to what you wanted to do. So as long as there's no permanent ability I don't know of that negates, you know, 20 rolls of enemies, you won't really be able to get around this. But yeah, I get it, get what you're thinking. Say, boring, get to the build already. So for this little build, we take a little channel mascot, Otter the Otter. For the basic rules built, the race doesn't really matter, so well, just say our little otter is a tiefling. You know, with the little horns, yeah, just because it's cute. For class, we would go for either paladin or fighter, as both have access to three important things we need for this. First, heavy armor proficiency. So with that, we give a little otter a plate armor. And with this, our otterling has... An AC of 18. Oh yeah, as a small explanation. AC is the minimum number someone needs to roll for a hit roll to actually damage you with an attack. The second thing is proficiency with shield. So let's give one to a little otter. What? You expect some giant shield? Well, D&D doesn't really differentiate between different types of shields, so... This little buckler is technically considered as good in defense as one of those giant tower shields you see in video games like Brown, for example, from League of Legends. But, okay, I get it, this looks a little silly, so let's give it a little more impressive shield. Okay, so a shield adds 2 to your AC, increasing it to 20. Also, for both shield and armor, we can get them even better, as unimpressively called, you know, plate plus 3 and shield plus 3, which at first sounds like they're made of some nice materials or so, but nah, just magic. And now he glows! As the name might suggest, the plus 3 is added to your AC for both armor and shield, so we're up to 26 now. Okay, so the third thing we need uh, one of those two classes for is the defensive fighting style, which is a little passive stat bonus we can choose that gives us plus 1 AC, so we're up to 27. The paladin gets to choose this level 2, and the fighter level 1. Now we give our little otterling a short sword. But not some random short sword, a magic one. The legendary defensive short sword. This short sword allows us to use its plus three, which it this time doesn't carry in its name, to our AC instead of, as usually, just to our hit rolls or damage rolls. Now we're up to 30. As a reminder, someone needs to at least Roll a 30 on a 20-sided die, okay, with modifiers, but it still sounds impressive, to hit us. Okay, now for a few lesser impressive accessoires. For this, you go for a ring of protection and a cloak of protection, both giving plus one AC. And with this defensive sword, the ring of protection and the cloak of protection, all three possible attunements someone can have are gone. So even if there were other similar items, we couldn't get them. And now we're up to 32 AC. Now, for the finishing touch, I haven't seen others talk about it in the well. Admittable few things I saw on this, but now we'll use one of our ability score improvements to get the feat Defensive Duelist. This feat allows us to add our proficiency bonus to our AC. If we have a weapon equipped that has finesse, and oh, would you look at that, the defensive short sword has finesse. Proficiency bonus maxes out at character level 17 with plus 6. Character level doesn't mean you need to get a single class up to this level. You can multi-class as much as you want as long as the class levels together add up to 17. 
And so with this, we're up to 38 AC. And yes, technically we could have made our otter a human variant to allow him to get a feat without having to use an ability score improvement, but I wanted him to have cute little horns. And our little otter hero could now be used as a terrestrial tutor that only gets her 2 out of 20 attacks as Tarask has a passive modifier of plus 19 to its hit rolls. And now for some flavoring, we could get the Paladin with the subclass Oath of the Ancients to level 7, and we'd have resistance for magic damage. Now our little Otter is not only nearly unhittable, but also gets half damage for all magic things, and that with only the basic rules and everything you get from just the player's handbook. Though, if your GM actually gives you all these items, is another question. But now, to how to be able to get AC high enough, to ask Zilla needs to roll a 20, only hitting you one time out of 20 attacks. For this, we turn our little order into a Warforged. And choose his body mode Heavy Plating, which only works if you're not wearing armor, so let's get rid of that. A Warforged in that mode has a base AC of 16 and gets his proficiency bonus added to this. So at level 17, he'd have a base AC of 22 without having any other items. But now, if we count all the other stuff to it, we'll get to an AC of 39. And for multi-classing and all that stuff for expansions, I don't really know that much about it. I just owned the player's handbook and I haven't even had my first real session as of writing the script. Yes, this is actually scripted, so I hope you don't mind. And well, that pretty much concludes the build video I've pretty much wanted to make and share for now quite a while. Is there some problem with Defensive Duelist, or why haven't I seen anyone else talk about it? Though the answer might just be I haven't searched enough. Am I gonna make more D&D videos? Well, I really want to, and I do plan on, you know, making videos about the sessions I've had. You know, as I said, as of the time of writing the script, I didn't have a, my first session, but uh, editing this video, editing this video was took so freaking long, mainly because oh uh, my editing program it crashed so many times. Uh, I had my second real session yesterday, and there's so much. It's just it was a blast. Okay, it was awesome. The DM was awesome. Maybe. Okay, maybe he wasn't as good as... I never saw Critical Role, but, you know, as good as them, but... You know, I watched the Team Four Star stuff, and... Maybe he's also not as good as, you know... It's his first time DMing, but I'm still having a blast, it's awesome! <laughs> but, well, yeah, I do really want to make videos about D&D stuff, about my sessions, you know, little videos about... You know, summed up what happened in my last session, or the sessions I've had so far, but well, I'll end it here. Any comments? Ideas maybe? Maybe just wanna praise me for having made a stupid other video? I'll read them all, so throw them down in the comments section. Huge thanks for everyone still watching. If you'd like to do me a favor, please comment auto down below to let me know someone actually made it to the end. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want, and goodbye!